What happened on your trip? Well, it was, uh, I think, probably back in 2017 or so. We got a bunch of mushrooms, some golden teacher mushrooms specifically, and decided to take kind of an evening walk out to view a blood moon above uh, one of our favorite lakes at Middle Creek, which is in uh, like Lebanon County here. And took the mushrooms, brought my little brother, Austin, along uh, for his first trip ever. It was me and my best friend, Cody Brown, uh, our former bass player. And took some mushrooms, really, I think it was probably about around two grams or so. So nothing earth shattering. So we're still pretty coherent, you know, like not quite broken through and set off for the lake and we're walking and as things start to come on and uh, the visuals are getting, you know, watercolory, so to speak, we're about to take a left turn down a certain path that's blocked off normally. So I'm thinking, you know, let's go down here so we have kind of our own safe space, like our own, uh, you know, sanctuary, so to speak. We turn to go down that path and what happens is this amber orb rises from the hills behind us. And Austin comments, he's, he says something to the effect of, um, you know, people are reporting amber lights being UFOs. And we're just kind of like, oh yeah, wouldn't that be crazy, you know, if the, tonight we see something like that. So we start down this path and I got this really interesting gut feeling that we shouldn't walk that way. Uh, and I kind of, it was like a, just a very snap feeling of paranoia, which I don't normally get because I'm pretty seasoned when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I was like, all right, well, we'll not go this way. And as we decide not to go, this, this orb redescends, you know, behind the hill again. So I was like, okay, I, I guess that's confirmation that that's kind of the correct move. So we keep walking. I kind of have forgotten about the orb at this point. And we make it to the lake and it's dusk in February, around this time actually of year. And uh, you know, the sky is this gradation of, of purple to orange and the trees are still nicely outlined against the horizon. And this blood moon, like thick, you know, red uh, blood moon is coming up over this lake and we're all staring at it. And one by one, without speaking, we turn away from the moon and we look up and probably about 300 to 500 feet up in the air is this silent black triangle. And it's so clear in the dusk that I'm seeing the paneling. I'm seeing the actual connection points of whatever material it's made out of. There's blinking lights in each corner. It's an equilateral triangle and a couple in the back and we all look at it and there's this moment of telepathy between all three of us. It's hard to describe, but it felt as though they're standing in my mind with me. Like they're standing, like if you can vision, envision your own thought or your own mind as a singular self, it's as though they were in my mind space with me. And we all had this singular moment of, of telepathy and as we start to acknowledge it more, this thing just pivots on its axis and just slowly glides off above the next set of hills. And the next 15 minutes are unaccounted for because uh, it goes from being dusk to complete darkness. And we're walking to this trail that I know, I'm like, wait a second guys, like what, what happened there? Like what, what should we be, should we be freaked out or like, it didn't really occur to me kind of objectively what we had seen until we got back hours, hours later. And it starts to settle in and we're just like, like you guys all, we had that experience, right? Like we start to verify with each other. Like my brother went straight up to bed as soon as we got back because I think he was a little overwhelmed by the experience, but we talked about it a couple days later and I let him bring it up too. I was just like, it's like, so how did it go? Like, how was, how was the trip? And he was just sort of like, we saw that thing. I was like, okay, yeah, we did. We did see that, whatever that was. 
And since then, he and I have really been working on this cosmology about what craft like that could be and what uh, intelligence might be behind that craft. Like in our ideal scenario, I guess it's that there's some benevolent AI or there's some benevolent technological or spiritual force that's available to humanity but not quite revealed. And I think it's kind of pertinent now with what has been reported recently with certain craft and things to kind of reiterate that. But um, yeah, it, like that was that was a psychedelic experience that had a very tangible, mechanical, otherworldly thing occur, which, I mean, a lot of the time, if you have these inner hallucinations and, and things of that nature, it's the subjective uh, kind of psychedelic sink to it all. But with something mechanical appearing, you know, it's suggesting to me of the force that consciousness is being more of a physical, perceptible, perceptible, uh, force that is uh, technologically captured or could have the potential to be measured technologically and at higher levels so yeah I mean from that you can draw whatever conclusions you like but that was uh, that was a significant one and it sticks with me today because it is so unbelievable objectively and also the kind of psychic phenomena behind it and yeah just just the the skepticism, I would say, maybe to have with AI, while at the same time seeing how it can push us forward as a species, and just kind of w w walk that, that tightrope, but as long as we can keep our balance, like, yeah, we'll see where we can go. So, that was that experience, yeah. Awesome. It's always a tightrope, <laughs> Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a great story. Appreciate it. Absolutely.